There was a time when millipedes were longer than Shaq. This is Arthropleura, existing 290 million years ago, along with numerous giant insects such as dragonflies as big as small dogs. Why aren't these arthropods as big anymore? With so many predators around, wouldn't it be advantageous to be bigger? Well, it might be, but it's not possible. Spiders are excluded for the sake of this video. Why are they part of the micro world? The answer lies in the air. You see, arthropods such as insects have different breathing systems compared to us, utilizing holes on the sides of their bodies known as spiracles. Miracle, miracle, spirit. Oxygen enters these spiracles, which branch down into tracheoles, one micron in diameter, which directly diffuses oxygen into their cells. Larger insects have larger tracheoles, which means it's harder for oxygen to diffuse. This wasn't a problem during the Carboniferous period, where 32% of the air was oxygen as compared to today's 19%. And this is why arthropods could be so huge as compared to today. People often think that this is why humans were taller back in the day, but that's simply wrong. This was way before our existence, and we're technically taller than other hominids. Now, let's say that oxygen wasn't a problem. Let's get bigger. Why can't non-arthropod creatures, vertebrates or otherwise, be monstrously huge, Godzilla size? This is because of the square cubed law. Take a cube, for example. If I wanted to make it 10 times larger, the surface area would increase by 100 times, 10 squared. The volume would be 1000 times larger. With large organisms, the surface area of muscles needs to carry this exponential weight, which is connected to volume. Being monstrously huge poses two problems. One being that any support system, bones or otherwise, must be strong enough to support the weight of the organism. And second, even if strong enough, the circulatory system will struggle to pump blood throughout the body. Cause my heart can't take it anymore. We can see this issue with tall people, who have low life expectancies as a result. This is why marine creatures such as blue whales and colossal squids can get so huge because the water supports the weight of their body due to principles of buoyancy. This phenomenon is known as deep sea gigantism. The largest known animal is the giraffe titan, 26 meters in length, 12 meters tall, and approximately 40,000 kilograms. Phenomenal, but what if we get bigger? What is the largest organism which has ever existed? You see this forest? That's one tree. The quaking aspen tree colony, Pando, spans over 43.6 hectares. Connected via the roots, quaking aspens are the largest superorganisms. Each trunk is a genetically identical clone to the next. This is advantageous during forest fires, as new trunks can regenerate from their intricate root structure. Since plants do not have the same limitations as animals, they are able to reach the most massive sizes. Other examples being the gargantuan redwoods and sequoias. From the largest to the smallest organisms, we can truly appreciate Mother Nature's scale. All life, which once arose from a single protocell 4 billion years ago, evolving into complex multicellular networks and millions of species. Beginnings are humble, but with time, their impact grows immense. Well, we've traversed a huge scale in this video. If you enjoyed this style of presentation, I highly recommend checking out the next video on screen. This is ABSE signing out. Take care and goodbye.